Hey guys, so Notability just released a new update, Notability 10.0. So I wanna go over all the new features that they're offering and my thoughts on them. So the first feature that is new is the favorites toolbar. So before you could have favorites before, but now you can have them in a toolbar. And let me show you how that works. So you go ahead and select a style that you like, and then you click on the star where it says favorites. And on your screen, you now get this toolbar that'll have all your favorites. So I believe you can add one, two, three, four, eight favorites that you want. And they can reside in this toolbar, which you can also move to different parts of the screen. So I move it over here, lower at the bottom. And basically the point of this is to give you really easy access to the different styles that you use the most. And I think this is a great feature to have because there are definitely a few styles that I use a lot and a few colors. And the fact that I can just select them without having to keep switching the color and the style and the font size on my own is really going to make note taking a lot easier and a lot more efficient as well. And to remove a favorite, you just click on the star again. So select the style and you can remove it. Now, if you don't want the favorites bar there for some reason when you're writing, you can click on the X and it'll disappear. And if you want to bring it back, just click on the star down here and your favorites toolbar comes right back where you need it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and remove it. I don't want to create any favorites right now. But when I start school again, I will like to probably create some favorites of my own. So the next feature that I've been wanting for a very long time is the ability to create arrows and curves that snap into place automatically. So let me show you what that means. So before, if you just drew a curve, your curve would look like that. And now if you draw a curve, it'll snap into place for you and you can adjust it to make it look as perfect as you want. So this is very similar to the shapes feature where you draw a shape and you hold and you get a shape that you want. It looks pretty good where you can also adjust. This is also similar to the line feature where you draw a line and you hold it down and it snaps into place for you too. So this is a really useful future feature for creating diagrams, for drawing you know, parabolas, for doing anything that requires sort of a curves, um, creating, creating diagrams for sure. When I, was, when I create notes, I think that's super useful to have something that can create curves for you like that. Definitely, a lot of the times I wanted to create semicircles and now I can kind of do that with relative ease as well. So it's kind of crescent moon, semicircle sort of shape, and then, you know, sort of draw a line across like that to fill it. I think that's fantastic. I think that's a really good feature, and I'm really glad that they finally introduced this. Another feature that I've been wanting for a very long time, and I'm super happy that they have brought it finally to Notability 10, is the ability to draw dashed and dotted lines. So here, if you just select this item here, you just swipe to the left and click on one of these, and then you start drawing, it automatically dashes or it automatically dots for you. So again, this is super helpful, not just for, you know, creating treasure chest maps, but it's really useful for creating different diagrams for sure. And I'm, I'm really happy that they have that. And what I used to do before, I would have to just, you know, draw a line. And then when they introduced the partial erase, I'd have to go and manually dash it myself, which just doesn't look as good. And the whole point of digital note taking, right, is so that you can have a more convenient way to take notes. So this just really exemplifies how useful and efficient digital note taking can be compared to just regular note taking on pe using a pen and paper. Now, the other feature is that you can also draw arrows and it'll snap them into place for you. So you just saw I drew an arrow roughly and now I created this really perfect looking arrow for me that I can adjust and move around. So this is really useful, especially if you're taking any uh, chemistry classes like I used to take or biochemistry. It's really useful for reaction and mechanisms and stuff like that. But even if you're not, if you just want to draw a diagram, I mean, this is just so much easier than having to do it before. So let me just show you before what I'd have to do is I have to draw a line the line would snap into place. Then I'd have to draw a triangle separately, which would snap into place, adjust it to how I wanted it. Then I'd move the triangle over to my arrow, to my line like that to create the arrow. Then I would fill the triangle and then I would have my arrow. So that's a lot of steps to create these perfect looking arrows. The fact that you can now just kind of draw an arrow like that and it creates an arrow for you is incredibly useful and incredibly efficient. So I am really glad that they did this. 
So there are two features left that I want to talk about. One is not really a feature that I think is new, but I wanted to address it because people believe that it's new. And the second feature is something that's new, but I don't find particularly useful. But since it is uh, something that they just introduced, I will address it as well. So the first feature that I don't really think is new, but people have been commenting and telling me about this, is the fact that you can now text al align your text in Notability. And that's not entirely true. So there are two different ways you can use text in Notability. So you can just go ahead and click anywhere on the note and start typing. And when you just start typing like this, you can't align your text to center it or right align it or justify it. But if you create a text box by holding down and then pressing plus text box, and then you type there, in the text box, yes, you can align your text. And I believe this feature has been around for a while. So this is not something that's really new. When I'm talking about the fact that Notability doesn't allow you to align text, I meant without a text box. It doesn't allow you to align text. And one of the reasons why I liked Notability and the way they handle typing is that they don't require you to have a text box to just start typing. You can just click on anywhere and you can start your typing like a Microsoft Word document. When you have to introduce a text box, well now if you want your whole document, your whole note to be just typing text, you have to fill the whole note with your text box and drag it to the proper size and then keep resizing it as you're typing and it's just not the same experience it's not as intuitive and it's not as efficient so I, that's that's not something that i really want to use i want to use the ability to just type to just touch and be able to start typing and when i do that i feel like i should be able to center the text or align it but i can't in the text box again if i click on here i can align it to the right, I can center it, I can left align it. So I just wanted to clarify that because some people did bring it up in, in my other videos. And it's not, I don't think, a new feature. It's been around for a while. But the new feature that is in Notability 10, which I don't think is that big of a deal, is this Notability Shop. So now there are certain things that Notability wants you to pay for, and most notably is the handwriting recognition. So I already had the app when I purchased Notability, or when I purchased Notability, they already had included handwriting recognition as not an add-on option, but now they're making it an add-on option. But since I already had the app, they grandfathered me in. But if you don't have the app yet and you want handwriting recognition, it is a separate purchase that you'll have to make within Notability. I don't know how much it costs, but it will be an in-app purchase. Now the themes, again, you could always purchase these before. Something that does seem kind of cool to me though is this planner, this digital life planner. I haven't seen that many nice looking digital planners on the app store. So I am really interested in this one. This looks very similar to just a regular physical planner, which I currently use because I think digital planning is kind of a mess right now. So I am really interested in this and I think it would be super useful for a lot of people. We'll see how much it costs. Hopefully it doesn't cost too much but I think it would be a worthwhile investment. And then finally, there are these new stickers that you can purchase to spice up your notes. I don't know who was really asking for stickers, honestly. I think that this is kind of silly. I don't really think anyone was clamoring Notability and Ginger Labs to add stickers to their Notability shop. But if you do want stickers, you can purchase these here and make your notes look a little bit different. I, I think it's nice that there's an option. I don't really think it was necessary though but it is there in the Notability shop. So that's about it. Those are all the new features in Notability 10.0. Let me know what you guys think of this new update. Do you think it has addressed all the concerns that you wanted Ginger Labs to address? And I um, am also aware that GoodNotes has released a new update as well with some similar features to this one. So I will probably make a video on that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of the update. And I will see you in the next one.